All right, Isaiah 55, let's call it free. However, understanding that this chapter seems to once again draw on that concept of two days. Once again, much of Isaiah taking the place or taking place over two days, not two literal days, but two periods of time. One, a day of rest and recovery afar off, but in the meantime, another day, a day of accountability. Understanding that this chapter does not lean so much into the description of accountability as much as it describes the day of rest. However, structurally, it's going to seem to take place in the form of an invitation and a requirement consistent with accountability to seek. Because even though he is throwing a feast or a party that is free of charge, it's still going to require some effort on our parts consistent with those two days, the day of rest and the day of accountability. Even though, as we said, he's not leaning heavily into accountability, he is still saying you got to have common sense. There are some requirements if everybody's going to be able to have a good time. Beginning in verse one, though, he is going to extend an invitation even to those who have no money. Why? Because he is throwing a party where there is no fee. Understanding that in verse two, he seems to be asking them, why are they paying a cover charge or a fee for an event that is offering food that is actually faulty by comparison and it doesn't seem like he's talking about literal food as much as he is talking about the ways in which we are sometimes baited into trying to satisfy legitimate needs through faulty means so he is going to go on in the second part of verse 2 to basically say you can do better and if you will listen he's going to say we need to change our diet why because Verse three is going to remind them of the way in which he made a deal with David, for lack of a better term, a prototype of an individual who found permanent status or permanent stability in their relationship with God. Verses three through five roughly seeming to remind them that in spite of David's flaws, he had the kind of character that made him welcomed to stick around at the function. And so in verse six, God is going to, as we mentioned in the second portion of the invitation, tell them to seek the Lord while he may be found. Understanding that even though it is free or he's throwing a function that is free of cover charge, as we mentioned before, he is still appealing to common sense to say it is going to still require some effort on our part. And he is not simply looking for people who are willing to accept the invitation. He's looking for the kind of people like David who are developing the kind of character that makes them welcome to stay. And quite possibly for that reason, verse 7 says, Therefore, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Key distinction being the wicked is being called to basically leave behind the things that he is doing and the unrighteous is being called to basically leave behind even the things that they are pondering or scheming upon that would potentially make it an unstable environment for everyone. Why? Well, as verse 8 says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts reminding us that there are two classes of information that God has for us. I think we've talked in previous lessons about the way in which, or we may be heading toward it in the prophets, uh, the way in which God has things that are revealed and things that are left mysterious to us, meaning he's told us enough for us to accomplish the purpose that he has for us, and that is basically becoming a fit in eternal places, places where we don't necessarily understand the culture for lack of a better illustration but what he is helping us to see is that culture shock may be nothing in comparison to how awkward a fit we would be in the places he is preparing if we don't allow him to reshape us into becoming a healthy fit with everyone he's inviting and for that reason verses 10 and 11 may help us understand why he says for his word will not go out void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which he has sent it out. Quite possibly, at least part of that purpose being to transform everyone who is willing into a fit with the place that he has prepared for us to enjoy for free. 
God's invitation to Israel in Isaiah 55, quite possibly giving us a picture of his invitation to the entire world as the chapter begins to close out in verse 12. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace.